We are now ready for drywall. The plumbing, electrical are done. We have the insulation in. We've cleaned out the house and put the paper on the floor. Here is rush hour in Blue Creek, Washington. Welcome back to the Tomarosa. So this is our last weekend here before the drywall contractors come in. We decided to hire that out because number one, we don't want to do it. And we saved in a lot of other ways by doing a lot of other work ourselves in order to afford to do drywall. They can do it faster, they can do it better than we can, and I really just don't want to do it. So we're doing uh, some things to finish up. Uh, blocking, it seems like there's a never ending uh, line of stuff that needs to have blocking for drywall. So we have to make sure that the wires are all buried in the boxes so when the drywallers use their zip router, uh, it won't nick those. Uh, we have to get everything out of the house. We need to make sure we clean up and we gotta put ram board down uh, to protect the floor and just trim some spray foam from around the doors and other just minutia and we have to finish insulating. For drywall blocking you have to put wood everywhere the edge of the drywall is in order to support it so like we had to add blocking along the bottom here, blocking up this wall that's what these are, blocking across the top there, blocking across the top here, blocking over here, blocking everywhere. When I initially ran the wire in here, I left everything really long so I could temporarily connect it to uh, test circuits. Now that I'm bearing the wires for the drywalling, I go ahead and trim off the excess and then I will uh, bury them in the boxes. Even though we are not finishing the upstairs quite yet, we went ahead and moved up some sheet goods. So we have some 4x8 sheets of drywall as well as some 4x8 sheets of plywood. We had to move these up here now because downstairs we framed a doorway at the base of the stairs and once we did that we would no longer be able to get stuff up the stairs. Another thing we had to do before drywall was finish framing in the door at the bottom of our stairs. This stud was actually out before so that we could move up the sheet goods, but now we have framed it in and the door will go right here and it will open out this way. We're going to use our six foot level and lay it across our studs and make sure everything's in line. And we want to make sure everything's within a quarter inch because otherwise it'll telegraph through. So this wall is in good shape, but this wall over here we have one stud that's twist it out a little bit you can see there's quite a gap right here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out how it tapers out and shim it out you're like an artist cardboard drywall strips are my preferred medium it's looking pretty good I think I might add one more strip the studs a little twisted so one edge is prouder than the other much better Much better. Yeah, I like it. So that's pretty good. We had two studs and one joist. One joist. Which is good. I guess all that effort we put into our attention to detail paid off. I also have an update on our spray foam situation. So we have uh, made sure that the spray foam sample made it to the uh, company and I got a phone call from our contractor and he is working with the company now they got the report that uh, the spray foam sample structure appeared to look right but that the mixture may have been off so we are uh, they are working on that and he appears to be fired up about that and he has always been uh, on our side 
So I feel like we are going to have a good resolution. It's just a matter of uh, continuing to work with them and being patient. So we will continue to let you know about that. So we roughed in our telephone cable. Uh, we actually got this cable from the telephone company. Uh, but it's routed through our boxes for the telephone and the where the internet is going to go. And then it's routed through the crawl space. So since we're getting ready to drywall, we're just going to push the excess back down. And it's just going to hang out in the crawl space until we need it. And I'll just tape the, uh, the end here. And this is just to get it out of the way for the drywallers. So I don't have to worry about them nicking a cable. We're putting in the phone box. For us, it's very important to have a landline especially being located where we are and Virginia got this box from the telephone company along with the cable so we have to do all the installation in the house to this box and then we're going to dig the trench but the phone company will be responsible from the cable from the road to the box. While Stacy is working on putting this in it looks like we have great weather which today we do it's snowed and you can see it's really sunny but then when you pan to the north, it, we're hearing thunder and it looks like we're going to get some crazy weather soon. We're under a winter weather advisory. So we got the wire, we got the box installed. So now we're done with it for now. We just literally got that phone box up and I am not kidding you. This is literally like five minutes later. This is the weather that was coming over that hill. Insane. Now it's 15 minutes later and you can see blue skies over the hill. There's the sun. And now there's the backside of the storm. We had about 24 mile per hour gusts and it dropped our temperature 7 degrees in 15 minutes. Hey you. It's time to get back to work. What is our next task? Everything that's in the house has to come out. It's going to suck. So today what we have been working on is cleaning out all of our tools and everything out Including of the dragon. Oh yeah, bye bye dragon. Out of the house. And we have to load everything in the back of our faithful truck and take it over to our shop. And Winter decided to make another appearance. I'm taking a quick break on our front porch and it's pretty snowy today. However, as you can tell, there are always blue skies on the Tomarosa. We also put uh, paper on the floor in the bathroom and in the shower we put down a towel and the paper on the floor and then plastic off the entire inside of the shower to protect it. Another thing we did to get ready for drywall is go ahead and hook up our wall heaters to the thermostats. So we have the house now set at 55 degrees and it is a nice change from what we've been experiencing. This stage of the project is brought to you by the color brown. We have brown insulation, brown wood, brown paper on the floor. So it will be exciting to have some uh, drywall on the wall. Uh, we had already had the insulation done, of course the plumbing and the electrical. So we put the paper on the floor. I finished insulating around the bathroom. I put some insulation in the closet that um, also butts up against our downstairs bedroom. But otherwise, it was just a matter of 
fine tuning and making sure everything was finished. So drywall will be soon and then we are moving on to finishing the inside. There are a couple of areas that will not be drywall. This wall in the kitchen that the kitchen sink is going to be on is actually going to be a beadboard wall. So we have labeled it no drywall this wall. And then in the closet that's going to be the little broom closet. I'm just going to fill that out with some plywood so I don't need drywall in there. And in the area underneath the stairs. No drywall. Also there's a little nook storage area off the back of the back door. That wall is also going to be a beadboard uh, plywood wall. And we have chose these areas to be non-drywall for a couple of reasons. The one in the kitchen, because we wanted to have an accent wall in the kitchen, we thought it would look nice. And then underneath the stairs, just because we thought it was diminished returns, it would cost extra money and time for them to drywall underneath the stairs. And we don't really need that. And in the broom closet, it's the same thing. We wanted to try to go ahead and make it as easy as possible and as cost effective to hire out the drywall. And then we can finish the other areas as needed. So what is going on with the spray foam? Okay, I just got off the phone with our contractor and he has been talking on and off with Demolik. They had already received our sample and they are sending out somebody to test his equipment. But uh, according to him, we are gonna have everything uh, made right. So apparently that means taking out the foam and maybe using dry ice to get the rest of the residue off the wood and then they're going to respray it. I don't have a timeline for this and because we're working with a corporate entity we will see how long this takes. I will continue to let you know what happens as we move forward. Until next time, thanks for watching and we will see you on the Tomarosa.